Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson, the second topic in Chapter 10, the Sports Development Pyramid. As always, we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your exam, and today you need to be able to define sports development and identify the different levels of the pyramid, describe the pathways performers take through the pyramid in different sports, and investigate the role of sports development officers. Sports development is the process of finding ways to ensure that individuals start, stay and succeed in sport. It involves the promotion of sports activities for the community in order to generate as much interest and participation as possible. Sports development is often viewed as a pyramid, with a large number of people at the base taking part at foundation level or for recreation and moving upwards towards the peak, where only a small number of elite athletes reside. We'll take some time now to study each level of the pyramid, starting at the bottom and working our way up. The foundation stage is the first stage at which people come into contact with a sport, which often happens at a young age and during school PE lessons. It's about recreation and having fun, but also involves learning the basic skills or fundamentals of an activity. More people occupy the foundation stage than any other level, indicated by the wide base of the pyramid. Having a strong base or foundation is vital, as the more people who take part and have positive experiences, the greater the number that will progress through the pyramid and eventually become top-class performers. Having been introduced to a range of activities during the foundation stage, individuals in the participation stage are now making choices about which sports or activities they would like to pursue further. This stage involves taking part in organised sporting activities at leisure centres and sports clubs, where enjoyment is still the main focal point. Sports clubs become more important at this stage because they help to provide a pathway to the next level of the pyramid. The performance stage is characterised by competition, professionalism and developing the level of performance towards the elite stage. Training and competition become more regular, structured and serious and winning is far more important than enjoyment. As athletes now need to commit more time to training, participants tend to focus on one or two sports only, developing specific skills or making fine adjustments to their techniques. In the performance stage, athletes may train with state, county or regional squads where they can expect to receive a higher standard of coaching and access to better facilities. The elite stage is the pinnacle of the pyramid as only a small number of outstanding athletes manage to progress this far. Performers move on from regional to national squads, where they receive the highest quality professional support, including coaching, physiotherapy and medical care. Most elite performers are professional, meaning they're paid to compete and train full time. Their lifestyle completely revolves around their sport, meaning big sacrifices are often required. Now, each sport has its own development program based on the performance development pyramid. These programs are organised by governing bodies, such as the FA, LTA or IAFF, and are there to raise awareness and promote the values of the sport, increase participation and support the progression of athletes through the levels of the pyramid. Let's take a look at some of the strategies used by a specific governing body, the RFU or Rugby Football Union, at each stage of the pyramid. At the foundation stage, the RFU ensures that as many young people as possible are able to access the sport through PE lessons. They also provide taster sessions through community groups and leisure centres in an attempt to get more young people involved. At the participation stage, coaching is provided through after-school clubs and community events such as festivals and fun tournaments are organised. These opportunities provide a stepping stone for those who wish to move up from the foundation stage and pursue the sport further. At the performance stage, structured competitions are provided through schools and standout performers are given the opportunity to represent their state, county or region. The RFU also works hard to establish links with club level rugby, where performers can expect a higher standard of coaching and competition. At the elite stage, national level coaching and competition are provided for only the most able players. Sports scientists, performance analysts, physiotherapists and specialist fitness coaches work together to provide the best support for the athletes. Successful sports development depends on the effective partnership and networking between a wide range of people and groups. One of the key roles is that of the Sports Development Officer, whose job is to identify and oversee a planned route through the four stages of the pyramid. 
Sports development officers are tasked with increasing participation at all levels, which they achieve by ensuring that people are aware of the activities available to them and how they can get involved, distributing information and promoting their sport, organising coaching, training and club development, and liaising with schools, governing bodies, councils and anyone else involved in the sports development process. Now you've just covered everything you need to know on the sports development pyramid. Double check that you understand everything you need to and come back next time for the third topic in chapter 10, access and participation in sport. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you in the next one.